Hello and welcome to The Broken Sword. Today we are having a look at the much asked question of what happened to the Entwives. I remember it was long ago, in the time of the war between Sauron and the Men of the Sea. Desire came over me to see Fimbrethil again. Very fair she was still in my eyes when I had last seen her, though little like the Entmaiden of old, for the Entwives were bent and browned by their labour, their hair parched by the sun to the hue of the ripe corn and their cheeks like red apples. Yet their eyes were still the eyes of our own people. We crossed the Anduin and came to their land, but we found a desert. It was all burned and uprooted, for war had passed over it. But the Entwives were not there. Long we called and long we searched, and we asked all folk that we met which way the Entwives had gone. Some said that they had never seen them, and some said that they had seen them walking away west, and some said east, and others south. But nowhere that we went could we find them. Our sorrow was very great, yet the wild wood called, and we returned to it. For many years we used to go out every now and again and look for the Entwives, walking far and wide and calling them by their beautiful name. But as time passed we went more seldom and wandered less far, and now the Entwives are only a memory for us, and our beards are long and grey. It felt only fitting to start a video about the Ents and the Entwives with a long passage from Treebeard. After all, he did like a good chat when possible. By the end of this video today, we want to get a good idea of what exactly happened to the Entwives that Treebeard appears to have lost or forgotten. But it feels like to start our journey, we should learn more about the Ents as a race. And also quickly, if you missed our extra Halloween video yesterday on the Barrow Whites, then please do not forget to check that out as well. And so, to start this video, I think it makes sense to give a quick background recap in case there are some of you who are not sure about who or what Ents are. The Ents are seen to be beings that were described as being like 14 foot tall humanoid trees, and these were brought into the world by one of the queens of the Valar called Yavanna. Now, she was known as the Queen of Earth or also as giver of fruits, as she was responsible for all growing things. This is where her idea for the existence of the Ents came in to be, as she wanted some kind of sentient being to protect the trees from other creatures in Middle-earth, or as she thought of it, shepherds of the trees. It was in fact the dwarves who were especially on her mind when bringing the Ents to life to protect these trees from them. This is also why they gained their nickname of Shepherds of the Forest, close to Yavanna's original thoughts. The Ents are considered to be immortal beings, although if not immortal they lived an extremely long time, with them being created at the same time as the race of the Elves. It was said that the Eldar, who were the first Elves to be found by the Valar Arame, loved to talk to everything, and there were stories of them teaching these trees how to talk, and in return for this gift, the Ents had a great respect for them. Treebeard even mentions this in the Two Towers, as he said that they were thankful for the Elves for curing the Ents of their dumbness by giving them a gift that they could never forget. When it came to the appearance of the Ents, they were not all the same. Yes, they all looked like very tree-like beings, but as you know, not all trees look the same, and Ents would grow to resemble whatever type of tree that they watched over and protected. They even developed their own language called Entish, which is described as a very slow and long-winded language, which is no real surprise when you get to know them. Although they were also described as being 14 foot tall creatures, their height would vary very much, so this can only really be considered as an average. And also, when they were motivated as a race, they all possessed great strength, with their thick skin also being hard to damage. It was even the Ents that Treebeard claimed that Morgoth made the trolls to be an imitation and mockery of, albeit the Ents were still supposedly stronger and faster than them. Although the Entwives are never described in detail, it is believed that they would be very similar in appearance to Ents, 
One of the main differences between them is that the Entwives were devoted to Yavanna, whereas the Ents were more devoted to Arome instead. Moving on though, if we take a moment now to look at this quote from the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien, with this letter being specifically 247, written to Colonel Wersket, he talks about his first thoughts and the appearance of the Ents in his histories. No one knew whence they came or first appeared. The High Elves said that the Valar did not mention them in the music. But some, Galadriel, were of the opinion that when Yavanna discovered the mercy of Eru to Aule in the matter of the dwarves, she besought Eru through Manwe, asking him to give life to things made of living things, not stone, and that the Ents were either souls sent to inhabit trees, or else that slowly took the likeness of trees owing to their inborn love of trees. The Ents thus had mastery over stone. The males were devoted to Arame, but the wives to Yavanna. So from this we can see a split from the early days, with the larger male Ents tending to larger trees and greater forests, whereas the end wives like to plant and control the smaller natural things, like flowers, vegetables and grass. Also with them possessing extremely long lives, or even possibly immortality, Treebeard said that Entins had never been at the front of their thoughts, as there was technically little need for them. After all, they would not pass on due to something like old age, so a little bit of what was the point, there were possibly bigger things to think about. If we continue to look back at the first age, this will be when the Entwives started to move away from the Ents. The Entwives would grow to want different things to the Ents according to Treebeard, saying that the Ents gave their love to things that they met in the world, and the Entwives gave their thought to other things. The Entwives also desired order and peace in the sense that all things should remain where they had been told for them to be, whereas on the other hand the Ents desired to wander and explore, only returning to the gardens of the Entwives sparingly throughout the years. We have an account of the Ents back from the first age when a host of them would show up to assist Beren in fighting against the dwarves of Nogrod after they committed the sacking of Doriath where they had killed King Thingol. But that story is one for another day, so of course let me know in the comment section below if you would like to hear more on that. In fact, if we go back now to letter 247 again, we get a passage from Tolkien's hand about this part of history. It was in Osirian, a forest country, secret and mysterious, before the west feet of the arid Luin, that Beren and Luthien dwelt for a while after Beren's return from the dead. Beren did not show himself among mortals again, except once. He intercepted a dwarf army that had descended from the mountains, sacked the realm of Doriath and slain King Thingol, Luthien's father, carrying off a great booty, including Thingol's necklace upon which hung the Silmarim. There was a battle about a ford across one of the seven rivers of Osir, and the Silmaril was recovered, and so came down to deal. Beren's son, and to Alwing, Deal's daughter, and Eärendil, her husband, father of Alros and Alrond. It seems clear that Beren, who had no army, received the aid of the Ents, as that would not make for love between Ents and Dwarves. This shows an example outside of the Lord of the Rings of how the Ents would fight when needed, especially with them having been created to defend their lands and forest against creatures like Dwarves. Whereas on the other hand, the Ent Wives just wanted to stay at peace more. Now, over time they started to move eastward over the Anduin, where they would come to settle and start to grow their gardens in the Brownlands, and these lands were between the Forest of Mirkwood and the Emin Wheel, and were considered to be beautiful and natural during these early years. However, this would not last. When they first moved, it was during the times of the Dark Days of Morgoth, so this stopped too much growth too fast. However, after he was defeated in the War of Wrath, their new gardens well and truly blossomed richly and their fields were full of corn, as Treebeard described it. The Entwives would even teach many men of their crafts, and they would honour them greatly, even though the Ents themselves were only ever legends to them. In general though, these early days were great and mostly peaceful times for Ents and Entwives alike. 
As we now move into the second age and the rising of the Dark Lord Sauron, this is where we start to learn about the sad fate of what appears to happen to the Entwives. During the times around when the last alliance of elves and men had formed and they devised their plan to march on Sauron in Mordor, Sauron knew he could do with trying to slow down this mighty alliance. So one of the things he did was to burn the lands down and around the Anduin to hinder their march, with one of these lands being the brown lands that we previously mentioned. So if we go back to the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien once again, but this time to letter 144 to Naomi Mitchison, we can see some more thoughts from the man himself. I think that in fact the Entwives had disappeared for good, being destroyed with their gardens in the War of the Last Alliance, second age 3429-3441, when Sauron pursued a scorched earth policy and burned their land against the advance of the allies down the Anduin. They survived only in the agriculture transmitted to men and hobbits. Some, of course, may have fled east or even have become enslaved. Tyrants even in such tales must have an economic and agricultural background to their soldiers and metal workers. If any survived so, they would indeed be far estranged from the Ents, and any reproachment would be difficult, unless experience of industrialised and militarised agriculture had made them a little more anarchic. I hope so, I don't know. So we can see from this that it appears Sauron had wiped them out. Now, whether that was intentionally, as he had seen them as powerful tree-like beings and them obviously being a threat, or just as a bonus to him when all he was trying to do was ruin the lands that the elves loved so much and also to then slow down the march of the army of the Last Alliance. And it is worth noting that it cannot be ruled out that some of the Entwives were in fact captured, enslaved, or even fled from here instead. However, it cannot be believed too strongly on this as there were no further records of them after this time. Perhaps they could have left and gone to far off lands that there are no records at all in existence of. After all, Tolkien did not write a full history of every area of his world, but realistically, we never truly know what their outcome was, and it's probably safer to assume that they died here. If I was talking personally, then I do believe that Sauron would have made sure that they were all burnt and wiped out, along with their gardens and lands to prevent any kind of uprisings or reactions in the future. Now, as for the Ents themselves, they would actually cross over the Anduin again in the Third Age to look for their Ent wives, with Treebeard specifically mentioning, as I had included in the quote from the beginning of this video, that Treebeard had wished to see his fair Fimbrathil again. However, when they did, all that they found was a desert of scorched land that had been uprooted from war and had been passed over. This meant that there was no sign of the Entwives at all, not dead, nor alive. And despite calling and searching and asking any beings that they could find, they only received mixed answers which did not appear to bring them any closer to finding the Entwives. In the end they returned to their wild woods despite the great sorrow that they felt at this loss but they would still venture out from time to time in search again. However, these did become less and less frequent as the years passed on. This reached the point that we then meet Treebeard in The Lord of the Rings, where he says to Merry and Pippin that the Entwives are now little more than a memory to the Ents, and that the hope of another Enting in the future had all but faded, even to the point that some of the Ents had now grown so tree-ish that they ceased to move or speak at all. So although there were songs sung that the Ents would one day again be reunited with their Ent wives, it seems these hopes would remain in song alone. As for the future of the Ents themselves, we know from the events of the Lord of the Rings that the Hobbits Merry and Pippin would persuade them to go to war one last time. This is where they would flood the Nan Curanea, which is the valley where Isengard stood destroying Isengard, trapping the wizard Saruman inside his Tower of Orthanc, and transforming the area back into a forested land like it had once been many years before, and this forested area would then be named Treegarth of Orthanc. The Ents would remain here and in the forest of Fangorn until they, like all other magical creatures in Middle-earth, would dwindle down in number as the following years rolled on with them becoming nothing more than just being a part of legends and myths in the future. 
Now there is one more thing that I would like to quickly mention before finishing off this video, and that is of the supposed sighting of a tree man near the Shire as said by Halfast Gamji, who was the uncle of Samwise Gamji. Halfast was known for his wild stories in the Shire, and from one of these it is said that he saw this tree man while hunting beyond the North Moors. Although it could possibly be thought that this could have been one of the Entwives, it is most likely that it is one of the Hwarns that he saw. And for those of you who are not sure, a Hwarn is considered to be either an Ent that had become too tree-like, or a tree that had become Entish. It is thought, for example, that Old Man Willow is one of these, which would likely mean they existed within the Old Forest and possibly in the surrounding areas too. Therefore, it is most likely to be that it is one of these that Halfast Gamji saw, if he even saw anything at all. And so that is where I will draw this question to a close for you all today. We have learned more about the histories of the beings known as Ents and Ent Wives, along with a quick understanding of what a Huorn is too. It appears that the Ent Wives sadly lost their place in Middle Earth due to the evil of Sauron, but the Ents themselves managed to survive a fair time longer, most likely becoming more and more treeish over time until they lost their ability of speech and could not be distinguished from the rest of the forests that they dwelt in. And so, from this I will ask you all my question for today, and that is, do you think that the Ent Wives were wiped out by Sauron's forces? Or do you think that some of them had managed to flee somewhere else and then grew new gardens in peace? Let me know all of your thoughts, opinions, or anything at all else in the comment section below, as I'd love to give them all a read. And now to finish off, I'd like to quickly mention our other channels that are all linked in the description below if you'd like to check them out. And also to shout out our patrons, with firstly our Divine Power team members of Kevin, Abra, Matt, and Glorfindel of Gondolin. You are all awesome. And a big thank you to our Fire Demon tier members of Nasheeth, Denver Steel, and Gregory. And as well, I cannot forget the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, and Pirate747 as well. Every single one of you patrons are a true legend of the Bro Hiram. Finally, if you've managed to reach the very end of this video with me today, please remember to do all the great stuff, leave a comment on the video, click the like button as well if you enjoyed it, all these things massively help us out. And so, thank you once again if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.